Hi everyone! In this video I want to show you my process for creating the parametric roof structure with pillars. It's a fully automated system that adapts to a different ground shapes, so you can use it in any landscape without any problem. We will cover a few interesting topics, such as repeat zone, proximity and raycast nodes. As you can see, our structure is made up of two main elements, the roof and the pillars. We will first work on the roof, then on the columns. The first stage will be creating a simple base mesh and then we will subdivide it, create an offset layer and connect these two layers with extruded mesh together. After that we will convert everything to curves and add some profile to it. And that will be it for the main roof. Then it's time for the pillars. Before we start we will need some ground. Then we will project some points onto it. This point will become our columns. Thanks to the repeat zone, I will add this splitting part on top of each pillar. In the end, we'll combine everything together. So, without further ado, let's jump into new blend file and our first task will be to create a new base mesh. For that, I will create a simple plane object. In edit mode, I will add a few extrusions to create a more interesting shapes. I will also play with the placement of edges to create this wave-like structure. And that will be it for the modeling part. Let's jump into geometry node section and create a new geometry node system. As I said before, our first task will be to create the roof. I want to have more rounded shape, so I will use the subdivision surface node, which gives me more geometry to work with and also make the result smoother. Now, to create the structural effect, I will need to offset our original surface in the normal direction. Thanks to that, I will have two surfaces that I will later connect. So, to do that, let's add a set position node, and with this node, we can change the position with sliders, but I want to do something more complex. Each point of our surface can be offset in the normal direction, which is perpendicular to the surface. The step for that is really simple. Let's add a normal node, which will tell us the normal direction for each element. After that, let's plug a vector math scale node and connect it to our offset input. With the scale factor, we can control the strength of this effect. I don't want too much of an offset, and I think something like this will be good. Now we have two surfaces, the original one and the offset one. It's time to connect them. To do this, I will use our original subdivide mesh. I want to extrude this mesh, but first I need to know the amount of extrusion. It will be the same as our offset distance, so let's create a new value node. Set the same value as in the scale node and plug it in. Now we can add an extrusion node, connect it here and plug our value node into it. With this nice setup, I can control two different things with a single node. Perfect. Now we have the extruded mesh. I want a structure that will look like this. So, actually, each extrusion should merge into a single center point. Something like a pyramid shape. This can be done in Blender really easily with just two more nodes. The first scale element node will allow us to scale each element around its own origin. Let's plug it after, and as you can see, we are now scaling the whole thing, not our desired result. What we need to do is tell Blender which faces we want to specifically scale. We want to scale newly extruded faces, and as you can see, the extruded mesh node provides us with some boolean data output, one of which is top. Let's plug the top output into the scale element, and now everything works perfectly. Let's set the scale to zero and plug the merge by distance node afterwards to get rid of overlapping geometry. Now we are ready to join everything together. Let's add a join geometry node that allow us to join multiple geometries into a single one and plug in our original extruded geometry and our offset surface. I will not plug in our original subdivided geometry because the extruded mesh already includes those edges and we don't need the faces only edges. Now we can once again use merge by distance node to ensure that we do not have any overlapping vertices. 
Now we have all the edges we need. The last thing is to convert our mesh to a more pipe-like steel structure. Let's convert everything to curve for that and let's add a mesh to curve node at the end. Why are we converting everything to curves? Because it is the easiest way that we can add a profile. It's a really popular operation. First, we convert to a curve. Second, we convert this curve back to a mesh with a curve to mesh node. And lastly, let's plug some sort of profile into this node. We will use curve circle for that. Because we will be using this element multiple times, let's group it by selecting these three nodes and pressing Ctrl G. Now we can plug in some parameters like radius, field caps and resolution to have more flexibility outside the group. As you can see, we have a little problem now. Our geometry is not connected. The second layer is floating. This is because we need to have different geometry on top to match the pyramid-like connections. So, there's a really easy fix for that. Let's just add a dual mesh node here. As you can see, everything works perfectly now. This node switches every face to vertex and every vertex to face, enabling us to connect two layers of our structure. Perfect. So, we've made the first part of our roof structure. Great job. As you can see, we can easily modify our shape and everything seems to work nicely. Now it's time to move to the second stage of our project, the columns. So, the system works like this. First, we need to create some points where we will place our pillars later. Now, let's project them onto the ground and create base curves from them. Now it's time to use the repeat zone to create multiple randomly aligned lines. Finally, let's add thickness to them and combine everything together. As you can see, we have a few steps to do. Let's start working on these columns. First, let's drag a new cable from our subdivided mesh and search for the distribute points on the surface node. Set it to poison disk. This option will allow us to set a minimal distance between points. Now I want to project these points onto our ground. I will use a simple plane as the ground for now, but feel free to use something a little more complex if you wish to. Let's drag and drop a ground object from the outliner and set it to relative. Now we can use it for our projection. For that, I will use the Raycast node. With the Raycast node, I can shoot rays from all of my points and check if they hit the ground. If not, I will delete them. If yes, I will set the position to the hit position. Let's add a set position node and plug our hit position into it. Make sure that the ray direction is set to minus one in the Z direction, because otherwise you can have really weird results. Now everything seems to work fine, but as you can see, the points that are outside the ground have the default position. I want to delete them instead. So to do that, let's add a delete geometry node, set it on points and plug is hit into it with a not node between. Now everything works perfectly. Small correction, actually the delete geometry should go before set position because currently some points are getting delete because of overlapping. I want to start creating a geometry for the columns. To do that, let's first convert our points to vertices with a points to vertices node. With that conversion, we will be able to perform many more operations like extrusions. Let's add an extrude mesh node and set it to vertices. Let's specify the offset direction with a vector node like this. I will set the offset value to 0.6. This line will work for us as the base of the column. Now we need to create the branched top part. To do that, I will use a repeat zone. I want to have several lines that will each be rotated in different directions. To do that, I will extrude a line from our main one, separate it and set a different position for the top vertex. After repeating this process several times, I will have a nice branching effect. Without further ado, let's start it. Let's duplicate our extrusion node and plug it in after. Let's connect the vector node and the top output 
to extrude only the upper vertex. Now we need to separate the top line and for that I will use the boolean math or node and a separate geometry node. I want to separate edges that have vertices that are part of the top of the first or the second extrusion. Perfect. Now we can start playing with the repeat zone. Let's add one repeat zone and before doing anything with geometry, let's add a math node. Plug it into our repeat zone like this and set it to 1. Now we will have the current iteration number in every loop. I will use it for the seed value for the random node. Let's add a join geometry node here. I want to plug our separated geometry into it. Now if I increase the iteration number, as you can see, we can't see any difference, but we created 8 overlapped set of lines. To make it useful, we need to randomize them. Let's add a set position node just before our join geometry. Now we can plug the top output to it to select only the upper vertex. The last node that we need is random value. Let's set it up with not too big values. We plug it into the set position node, but we still see only single lines. Why is that? Because in each iteration we are using the same random values. To actually use different values for each iteration, we need to plug our iteration number into the seat input of our random value node. Now everything works perfectly. We can choose the amount of iteration based on how many branches we want. Next, we need to set up the position of the top vertex on our roof construction because currently we have complete randomness and a lot of branches are missing the roof construction. Let's convert our mesh lines to curves and with endpoint selection let's select the top parts with a new set position node. Now we are able to manipulate only the top part of the curves. To place them on our roof structure we will use a geometry proximity node. That node will give us the position of the nearest surface, vertex or edge of any given geometry. Let's add it and plug it into our roof structure. Set it to faces and now we can plug it into set position node. As you can see, we have perfect result right away. Great job! Now I want to add thickness to our columns. Let's convert it back to mesh with a curve to mesh node and now we can duplicate our groups and plug it here. Let's do the same for our main columns. Now we have all elements ready. Let's connect everything together with join nodes. The last things that we can do is to set up some materials. Let's create column, roof and branches materials. And now we can set them up by using set material nodes here, here and here. Great. As you can see we created this pretty complex structure with not that many nodes. We can modify its shape very easily and it works on uneven surfaces too. I hope you learned something new in this tutorial. Thanks for watching. If you want to support my channel, you can check out my Blender add-ons, links in the description. Thanks again for watching, see you again soon, and bye!